This thing is 64 millimeters, making it the same size as a Weichuang GTS, a Shadow V2, and an Outfoot WRM. Okay, so in this video, I probably have one of the biggest puzzles I've ever printed, although biggest is debatable because obviously if you want to count the number of layers, the previous biggest puzzle I've done is 5x5 and this one absolutely destroys that number with like going up from 5 all the way up to 14. Go by actual piece count, this one still wins because 24 wings, 24 X centers, 24 T centers gives you a total of 72. Then you add on 8 corners and 12 images, that's 20 in total, so 92. And then 6 centers, 98, and then the core, 99. One block has 7 pieces and then there are 8 of them in total, so that's a total of 56. This thing is built from 3D printer extensions over at G Mini Keychain 3x3. If you want to add on the internal pieces, the corners won't count because they are already glued to all the 3D printer extensions, so by counting the initial 56, the corners are already counted. Then, because of how the alignment mechanism works, I actually, like one of the extensions actually not only glue onto the corner, they also catch on to three edges and three centers, so it would feel it like that, and the rest of the internal 3x3 is free to turn, except for this block, and it also includes a core. So this whole block plus the core is kind of out of action, and we only have nine edges and three centers left, there's a total of 12, so 12 on top of 56 would give you a total 68. That's definitely quite a lot less than 99 pieces. By counting the pieces, I've also kind of explained how I've done it already. 3D printer extensions over a mini 3x3 and how the alignment mechanism works. But like the reason why I even did this in the first place was I, just, I was just talking to a friend and then he actually wanted to do a character 2x2 where like we take an image of a character, turn it into a 3D model and then we chop it up and turn it into a 2x2 using the same like 3D printer extensions idea. But then when I was traveling home on that day, uh, I suddenly had the idea, why not instead of a character, I can cut out the mechanism of a very big cuboid. Very heavily inspired by NK cube, but there are some differences. But I'll go over the obvious similarities first. So the lowest piece of, of this entire block is part of a 3D printer extension. And, and it's actually quite tall inside. It goes all the way up and it has a hook to lock the outer layer. The five inner pieces are identical pieces with very short mechanisms and they just hook underneath, like, or they hook in between these. So now, now I'm going to talk about the differences between my mechanism and NK cubes. So with NK cubes mechanism, all his five, or in this case he's, he's a 2x2x16, two by two by so he will have six of these pieces and they are actually not locked onto anything, they are just sandwiched in between. So I'm going to show the picture on screen, but his pink part here, which I labeled as part one, it doesn't have a cap on top. You compare that to mine, it has quite a big cap. So this means that for all the green pieces, which are the hanging ones, you can actually assemble them without the outer layer. And they are actually locked in rather tightly, which I think this actually helps to make my cuboid quite a lot more stable than his red. I've obviously never tried his cuboid, but like, based on what I've read, and I think what he said himself, that, it's the, that the slices turn quite easily. And I think some people have said that it's a bit more towards the loose side. Whereas mine definitely feels a bit tighter. Okay, the next big difference is how he locked his outer layer down to the middle layer. So again, back to the picture, this is how the blue part locks into the pink part. I'm not very sure what's the inspiration be behind his design, but my design is definitely inspired by the X-Men boat square one. And after talking to another friend, he actually said that my mechanism overall looks a lot like a square one and after some thinking I realized yes there's actually a second square one inside my mechanism and it's kind of like the X-Men boat as well. Generally the pieces of the X-Men boat shape like a letter S so you can kind of tell with the, with the blue part here but actually if you were to rotate the picture and have stretch your imagination a bit the entire set of green parts combined together actually form quite a fat letter S. Last final difference between my mechanism and NK cubes, which is quite a minor difference, is his hooks all point downwards and mine point upwards. Also, there are just two other minor features that I really just tossed into my cuboid for fun. The first is a gun honeycomb, and the second is this cuboid is magnetic, although it's only magnetic in one axis. So the axis with 14 layers, obviously I want to put magnets so that when I do all the slice turns, they will align better. Although the alignment is still not perfect and the pieces still have a little bit of wiggle room despite the magnets. So one thing you will see a lot during the solve is, uh, of course table abuse is one thing, but another thing is 90 degree clapping like that. 
because I can actually use the whole bandage side to align all these seven layers on top and seven below. Now, now I'm just going to speak about the performance, which I will say my cuboid actually turned out quite a big, quite different from NK cubes. He said that his outer layer was the tightest one. His hanging layers turn rather fast. I will say mine is a bit of the opposite. My hanging layers turn with a little bit more effort, whereas my outer layers are really fast and really nice. Yeah, probably the boat spec might have helped in that. But one other thing that is, I think, quite unique to my cuboid is it's actually easier to do slice moves than it is to double turn and or like do a multi a multi layer turn and include the top layer. And I would say like yeah, the reason for that is just whenever I turn this one. I'm actually turning two square one mechanisms inside. So back to the picture, I'm actually turning both the blue and the green square one at the same time. Whereas if I turn just the outer one, I'm just turning the blue square one. And if I'm turning an inner slice like that, regardless of the number, it's pretty much any portion of the green square one with like more or less the same contact area. So it's, it takes quite a bit of getting used to because when you do a bigger cube like that, usually the slice moves take more effort and it's easier to do a double turn than, than to do a slice move, but with this cuboid it's kind of the opposite.